Good morning, everyone. It's Monday, the, the 25th of January, 2021. Welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang with Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Well, we're continuing on our adventure in the reflection on uh, the book of James. And uh, today we're going to continue in James chapter 2 from verses 8 to 13. I want to speak about some thoughts with uh, an extension of what James was speaking about in earlier verses, which I covered off in the last Food for Thought, um, warning believers uh, not to show favoritism towards anyone because of their external qualities and not to show partiality on a perception that they lack certain qualities. We spoke about how wrong it was to look at people differently due to social class and how wrong it was to presume what was inside the heart of an individual um, by the size of their bank account or how they looked and what kind of clothes they wore. So James continues encouraging his readers when dealing with other people to follow what he calls the royal law of scripture. And James 2 verse 8 says, If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. And why does James call uh, loving your neighbor as yourself as the royal law? The law of love, you see, is the fulfillment of all the law and the prophets. It is what Jesus displayed when he came and gave himself as a sacrificial gift to us so that we could have life, even though it cost him his life, his own life. And Jesus, being the King of kings and the Lord of lords, um, he, he followed this royal law. It, it was the law that was given through the example set down by Jesus Christ. And that's where we have Philippians chapter 2 which tells us that our attitude should be like that of Jesus Christ, um, who being in very very nature God didn't consider himself equality with God something to be grasped. And it goes on to tell us how Jesus gave himself, um, you know, he stepped out of his heavenly royal position and became obedient to death on a cross. So, as Christ-like ones, Christians mean, Christian means Christ-like one, with hearts that have been changed by the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, um, for for showing partiality to the poor, um, that it's out of nature with the Spirit that's living within us. Um, for when a person shows partiality towards the poor, um, they violate the royal law of Christ, which is also by the way, a fulfillment of the law of Moses in Leviticus chapter 19, 15, which says this, Do not pervert justice, do not show partiality to the poor or favoritism to the great, but judge your neighbor fairly. You see, what was written in Deuteronomy, or in Leviticus, I should say, in the law, is good. That's a good principle. But for those who are not regenerated by the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, it's impossible to obey the law of Moses. The opposite is also true, that what the law was unable to do, in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, the Holy Spirit does in power inside of the believer. As written in Romans chapter 8, 3 and 4, where Paul tells the church, For what the law was powerless to do, in that it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man as an offering for sin. He thus condemns sin in the flesh so that the righteous standard of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. Therefore James was concerned that those who claim to have faith in Jesus and showed partiality towards the poor and favoritism towards the rich, they could only possibly have a, an empty profession of faith. They might not truly be believers. 
This is why how we treat other people in accordance with the royal law of love as displayed by Jesus Christ. That is a litmus test for whether or not we truly possess saving faith. This is why James continues to speak in verse 9, um, saying this, But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, You shall not commit adultery, he also said, You shall not commit murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. So James moves from a specific example of partiality to poor people and favoritism, favoritism to rich people to make a blanket statement about favoritism. He says that favoritism, no matter how it looks, is sin that disregards the royal law of Christ. Regardless of the sin, it all starts with selfishness. Now follow this. Selfishness is showing favoritism to ourselves at the expense of other people. Adultery is a selfish sin. Murder is a selfish sin. Being racist is a selfish sin. Stealing from other people is a selfish sin. When it comes down to it, when you think about it, all sin is selfishness. And it all starts with showing favoritism to ourselves over others. Thus, if one breaks the law, at one point, he or she is a lawbreaker because the attitude that commits the sin is lawlessness. So James expresses to the church that the believer ought to speak and act as though as one who would be judged by the law that gives freedom. That is the royal law, which is in actuality a litmus test for true faith. So if we if we do not love God, we are not his children. We will not obey him, and conversely, we will not truly love others as we love ourselves. And we will wind up sinning, and in doing so, we will do harm to our neighbors. Therefore, if we live by the royal law, we will love our neighbors as ourselves. And the royal law comes from the love of God which is born inside of the believer when the believer becomes saved. See, when Jesus washes away our sins, he uh, takes his law and he writes it on the tablets of our heart by putting um, the Holy Spirit in us. The Holy Spirit comes and makes his presence inside of us. Therefore, when we love God, we, uh, we're connected to him, and we obey him. And we also love other people because the love of God is in our hearts. You see how the difference is people who try to obey the law of Moses on their own strength fail. They fall. It's only when there's a heart change, when the Holy Spirit comes in, that we can triumph. And uh, God shows us mercy and grace, and forgiveness. And he wants us to be like-minded as to him and show mercy and grace to other people around us as well. And this is why mercy triumphs over judgment. God delights in having mercy on his children. And he relents to send calamity. This is Food for Thought.